study intellectual we study before sensation and perception sense knowledge now we go to the intellectual knowledge intellectual the act of knowing through my intellect um, well, Father uh, Wallace gave you first a summary of what we studied just before. I go to number 25.1.3, Interaction. Uh, it, an example of interaction. From the sensation of color, others, and touch, and from the perception of things present under colors, others, and touch, or touching, for example, leaves, huh, branches, etc., from all that same knowledge, men can also say that is a tree. That means uh, that is a tree. What do you have in that? You have first that and three. You have that and you have three. <laughs> so we must know what is that. <laughs> of course, maybe you don't know the name, but you see there is something in front of you. That, huh? <laughs> and you know what is a tree. Now, first operation of the mind is to know what are things. Uh, to know what are things. And we call that simple apprehension. So we, we see uh, the, the whatness, uh, the whatness, the quiddity, uh, the whatness or the quiddity of a thing. Now, if I put together the tree with the subject that and affirm the existence, I have a judgment, huh? a proposition expressing a judgment. That is the second operation of the mind, huh? judging, expressed through a proposition. But to affirm a conclusion, I must have a reason for that. I must have a middle term. Middle term. And that is reasoning. <laughs> so I have the three operations of the human mind. So intellection, in fact, it is all that. But first we begin with the first step. And the first step is simple apprehension. How is possible that uh, that object in front of me uh, be known by my mind? So now that it is how we can know material object in a, through our intellect. How is possible? So I will use the, that graphic here. Okay. Um, okay. So we have we studied just before sense knowledge. Remember, we have an object here. That object is material, huh? Sen sensible, and singular. And that object is material. Quantify. Huh? It's quantify matter. Okay. And we saw that from that object, only the form. Uh, the form will enter the, my mind, okay? And we enter through our senses. Our senses are external senses. Huh? External senses are the gate to knowledge. So we have every sense as is a, a particular object, a proper object. So, our sight, hearing, smelling, etc. So, those, uh, those forms, because they are the form of color, the form of smelling, the form of touch, etc., they enter my mind, but they must be coordinated, they must be unified by a faculty we call the coordinating sense. Okay? In that sense, unify all those and from that, there, are, uh, there is a, 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 a picture, uh, and the first result of that, we call that a sensible Single. impress species, okay? Sensible impress species. 
the image, sensible image impress in my imagination. Because the sense that will keep the image here is the imagination. Imagination has the power to keep, to restore, uh, to store and to represent and also to change, huh? fiction, okay? Sada. Huh? And we can use that image for the past, for the past and for the future. So when I use that for the past, memory. it is memory. When I use that for the future, it is koji, tatsiv, or st, tatsiv, or instinct. Okay? So the final fruit of that is the phantasm. A image, a slide, huh? a slide, we call it phantasm. And that phantasm is the sensible express, express species. species. That means I can express that to myself. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, image. Well, that sense sensible express species is singular and sensible. Sensible. Huh? sensible sensible singular and singular it is the image of this cat of this house of this person mm. well, some philosopher say everything stop here we know only through our senses period uh, Marxism, for example, materialist. Uh, uh, in England, Hume, empiricist, uh, sensualist, all those people, they deny, even Dewey, uh, they deny we can go to the uh, concept. Mm. So that is the sense now. We started that last class. Uh. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a new possibility, we call the intellective knowledge. And some, some uh, philosophers say, we don't know, we don't need that. We don't need sense knowledge. Because we have already, when we are born, innate ideas. Huh? We have innate idea. So that current innate idea is called Idealism. Idea. Kant. Mm. Kant. Kant. They can't. Descartes. And before Plato and Saint Augustine. Huh? So they had many explanations. Someone they say, you know, I don't need my senses because when I am born I have all the ideas. And when I see something, it's only to provoke what I know already. Mm. So the senses give me nothing. I cannot trust my senses. And Descartes, for example. Huh? Saint Augustine will say that is God put in me all the ideas. Mm -hmm. He cut a good magician. Huh? Plato, <laughs> I have that in an anterior existence. Huh? We call metempsychosis, huh? a reincarnation. So before I was <coughs> a meno, a slave, <coughs> when he was living before, uh, he knew that uh, I was made a triangle. Okay? But, uh, the, the, the position, I think, the most realistic position, it is what we call moderate realism. That means we, we need both. We need the role, the, the function of the senses to know. They have something to, to, to give to us to know. And we know also we need our intellect. We need the role of the intellect. So how we can explain the role of the intellect? So, the, the genius of Aristotle, and St. Thomas uh, uses Aristotle, it is to make a synthesis and to, to, uh, to give a, a solution that is very interesting because we can use, we must use our sense knowledge to have intellectual knowledge. And there is no intellectual knowledge without sense knowledge. We call moderate realism. The genius of Aristotle was not to refer to God or to refer to metempsychosis. He said we have in our mind the power of abstraction. 
the power of illuminating fantasy. Mm. In fact, my intellect, my intellect, he said, no, he said we have the agent intellect. And we have the passive, well, a patient intellect or passive intellect. The question is, do we have two intellects? No. No, we have one. 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 With two. Your end. Can you do many things with your end? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is, you have many ends. You have uh, ends to eat, uh, ends to shake, mm -hmm. uh, ends to pray. Three the ends? The same end. Ah, the same end with many Actions. functions. Functions. Like functions. Many functions. So that is the genius. He said, my intellect has the power of illuminating the phantasm. I can send in the phantasm the light of my intellect. I illuminate, illumination. And that illumination provoke abstraction. Huh? In fact, abstraction. Abstraction. What is too abstract? Too abstract is to take something from, no? Extract, abstract. Huh? I take something from, but if I take something from, I left the other. So abstraction is a separation. I separate something from the other. So <laughs> what is here the separation? My phantasm was sensible. Uh, expressing something material was sensible. What after abstraction? What do I have? I have something. It is not sensible. Uh, it is abstract, and because it is abstract, it is universal. 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 That means applicable to every kind of being in that kind. For example, cat. The idea of cat applicable to every cat in the world. Okay, so if the illumination provoking abstraction detach from the singular because it was singular, it was the the house of my grandfather to any kind of house. He was the dog of my uncle to any kind of dog, etc. So that is received on my patient intellect. My patient intellect. That means I have the power to illuminate and to receive the fruit of illumination. Okay, I give you an example. You look at yourself in the mirror. Who is sending the image? The mirror. You. You. Who is receiving the image? You. You. And what is the, the, the name we give to that phenomenon? The mirror. Image. Yeah. Mirror image. Reflects. Never studied that the physics? When you look at yourself in the mirror, the mirror reflects your image. image. It is a phenomenon of reflection. So you can send your image and you receive your image. Here you, you send the light and you receive the fruit of that light. You have the, at the same time the light and the screen. And one analogy, uh, St. Thomas did not know, neither uh, nor uh, St. Uh, Aristotle, it is the uh, projector, slide projector. Well, for those who don't know it is a slide projector, we ask the older one. Hmm? It, is a, <laughs> it is a, yeah, a projector with a lamp. Yeah. Huh? With a lamp here. Yeah. And everybody knows. Okay. So. And to, and you have a screen here, huh? a screen. Mm -hmm. And what do you need? You need a, a movie, a film, huh? You need a slide. Huh? 
Hmm? A slide, okay? So, <laughs> if I have a slide but no light, can I have something here? No. No. If I have a, 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 light, um, a, a, a light without slide, can I have something? No. I need both. And now I explain something very important. Because we are in the domain now of causality, metaphysics. <clears throat> but think about you. You are writing. I am writing. Who is writing? You. You. Only my... my, my uh, do, what does my chuck? Your hand. It is also... Writing. Writing. Both we are writing. Your brains. Your pencil, right. And when there is no ink, what do you see? You cannot write. You don't say, I cannot write. You say, it, it cannot write. So both, you write. But you, as an intelligent person, you write as an principal efficient cause. Principal efficient cause. Huh? So the light here is the principal efficient cause. That means... It is the agent producing the effect. But the, but the, the pencil, the chalk, uh, the slide also do something. What is a, a, a pencil? What is a chalk? What is a hammer? What is a, 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 a computer for us? What is that? A tool. Tool. Instrument. So you slide here, light your pencil is an instrumental organ efficient cause. Instrumental here, principal here. You understand that? Yes. That's very, very, very important. Because it will be used in theology, the sacrament, you know, the sacrament of our heart, uh, to be a priest. Huh? Who is the minister? Who is the principal efficient cause? When you give the absolution, who is the efficient cause? Jesus. Yes. Huh? Efficient as a God, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. And you are the? It's an instrument. It is a very important. Okay? So let us apply that now here. <laughs> who is causing the abstraction? What is causing the abstraction? No. <laughs> Agent and killing. So the agent intellect is the principal efficient cause. But it needs a slide. It needs a phantasm. Mm -hmm. So the phantasm is the slide. The phantasm is the pencil. And that it is the instrument. instrumental instrument. efficient cause. That is very, very very important for your studies in theology and the rest also. To distinguish between the efficient principle, or oh, both are, both are efficient cause. Both are producing an effect, both. One is principle, the other is instrumental. It's the same for life, you know, when we study life, we give life. Your father, your mother, he cannot. He cannot. Because life is spiritual, you cannot. So life is created by God. But your father, your mother, was the instrument. instrumental efficient cause. You can apply that to many, many, many things. Okay? It's clear? Now, okay. So my intellect. As principal efficient cause, he illuminates the phantasm, and when he illuminates, he produces abstraction. I detach what is singular, what is sensible, and I obtain something that is abstract and universal. Okay, you understand that? Yes. And it is the same intellect, but with two functions. Function of illuminating, the function of receiving. It's a phenomenon 
is called reflection. reflection. And that is a proof of the spirituality of the human soul. And my knowledge does not depend on the sensible object. Of course, as a tool. With the principle, a cause, efficient cause of the knowledge is myself, is my mind, independently of the matter. That is a proof, the power of reflection is a proof of the spirituality of the human soul. Very important also. Okay? Now, when I, I understand that, huh? I understand, I have an intelligible impress impress species. So my impress species. In fact, the same thing. Here, sensible impress. Huh? First. Here, intelligible and I understand. It is the understanding. We call that also the insight. Huh? Insight or understanding. I understand. As long as you don't understand, there is no intellectual knowledge. You can learn words, but you don't understand. I say that, for example, in the oral examination. I ask a question, the, the answer with words, but there is no connection between the words. They don't understand. Mm. And they understand when they can put a connection between the words. No? Mm. An inference. No? That is the insight. You remember Mr. Archimedes? He was searching to prove, how to prove to the king that his crown was pure gold. Mm -hmm. And he was in the bath, in the pool. He suddenly he realized that he was pushing by the water in this place. He discovered the principle of hydrostatic buoyancy. Because of that, he was able to give an answer. To so he was so happy. He jumped out of the pool, he forgot his pants, and he ran, he said, Eureka, I understand, I discovered. Huh? I discovered, I, I, I caught it, I catch. Okay? Now, that is the first time. And when you understand, it is forever. <coughs> when I was in the, first, in the second grade, the teacher wanted to teach us how to add, make addition more than 10. So what she used, she used popsicle stick, popsicle sticks. Mm. Unfortunately, without popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> so, the popsicles were abstract. <laughs> Detached. So, she used popsicle. And when she put, took three popsicles and put here two other popsicles, she asked us, how many popsicles? She said, here, how many? Three. Okay, three. That is three. And how many here? Two. How many? Two plus three, five. When you understand that, huh? you understand that, you have the insight, it is normally forever. It's the reason why I insist so much, so much on assimilation. Try to assimilate, otherwise you lose your time and your money. If, if something is not assimilated, the subject is not understood, huh? it's of no value. Even if you have an E, a, huh? A, but you understand the thing, for it is, it is a junk for you. Huh? But if you understand, it is for the rest of your life. That means when I understand something, I can use it after. I can express that to myself. Huh? And, and what did the Mr. Archimedes? He went to the king, and the king asked him, explain me that. He explained to the king. But to explain to the king, he must first understand. And from that here, what we have? We have a concept or idea. And the concept, the idea, is the intelligible express species. I express to myself what I understood. Since huh, I was in the second grade, now I can know 3 plus 2 equals 5 for the rest of my life. If I don't understand, I will never be able to say that. Now I have the concept. What is the concept? It is the idea expressed to myself. That concept is abstract and 
the universal. Okay? Now, how can communicate to others the concept I have? Through verbal expression. Word, language. Word. Huh? To the word, not to the term, to the word. But what is the word? <coughs> Verbal expression. Verbal if I have an expression, it is singular and sensible. No? If I say cat, cat, you can record that, huh? You can receive that, cat, C A T, cat, 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 meow, 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 okay? Yeah. It is singular. <laughs> it is the son of cat, because the son of cat is different from the son of dog. dog. A kangaroo. What happened? You receive at your turn exactly the same thing here. The word becomes for your brother an object that is singular and uh, sensible. And what you have to do? You have to do the same process. You have to abstract. That means every word I tell you you have to do that. Otherwise, there is no meaning. If I say, for example, the word, uh, the word mother and for mother, uh, you have to abstract, abstract from the word mother. In French, it's matière, another thing, materia. You, know? you have to, to, from that sound, you have to abstract the idea, the concept. Interesting? Mm -hmm. So when you have two persons and you are communicating, I am here and you are here, I communicate something, a word. The word is concrete, the word is sensible, the word is singular. You receive that in your ear, so we have to abstract again. That means continually we are abstracting. Continually we are separating sense knowledge from its singularity to universal knowledge that is the concept. So here we have a very good synthesis of what is the theory of knowledge. And that is important because it is here that philosophers take different orientation. Either there is only sense knowledge, materialism, no? materialism, communism, uh, utilitarianism, the philosophy of capitalism. On the other side, idealism, without any reference to senses, and finally, both together. No? And I think the best is to take uh, to, we know through our senses. We, our ideas are their root in our senses. Okay, so I go to the text now. <coughs> I explain almost the majority. Now we have to, to go to some detail. <coughs> Page 170. So the abstraction, I already spoke about that, huh? is, um, so, um, <coughs> The process by which men form idea from sense knowledge. Huh? But to make those idea from sense knowledge, we have to detach. We detach from what? We detach from sensible character. For example, my dog, my dog is black, but a dog in general can be any color. So I put aside black. Huh? And, um, and the singular, my dog, or the dog of my own dog to arrive to a, a concept huh, that is not attached to any sensible quality. A concept dog imply any kind of quantity, any kind of color, etc. And secondly, that is be, be, we can apply, huh, applicable, attr uh, through att attributable, predictable to every, every kind of every dog on the universe, in the past, in the present, in the future. That is abstract separation, huh? to separate from, okay? 
Uh, and uh, to arrive to that, what is doing that? It is the agent intellect, uh, number two. And the one that received that is the passive intellect. In fact, at the beginning, my intellect is tabula rasa, huh? tabula table, with nothing, tabula rasa. And he is receiving, huh? receiving the form, huh? the form, through, because what I receive is the form. Huh? And because I have the form in my mind, I can communicate the form in your mind. But to communicate the form in your mind, I must use a word. So that you have to abstract at your time. It's incredible how we speak, we, we, how we uh, think rapidly. I read an article, it said we, we think probably one million times faster than the computer. Mm. It's incredible. The, the power of the mind, human mind, is almost instantaneous. Huh? Okay? Now the illumination, number three. Huh? And uh, what is illuminated is the phantasm. And what is illuminating that is the light from, uh, uh, okay, that is, when we speak about illumination, it is in fact abstraction. That illumination does not come from God, come from my own intellect, that is the agent intellect. And when the agent intellect is abstracting, my agent intellect in terms of causality, it is the, Principal efficient cause. And the phantasm that is illuminated, it is the instrumental efficient cause. Mm -hmm. you, know? you must have that clearly, clearly, clearly. You know what I try as a whole teacher to simplify the thing and to make that the most the clearer the clearest I can. Okay? I, but I cannot assimilate for you. Only you can assimilate. I prepare the meat. A little portion, but you have not to assimilate that, you have to chew that. <laughs> okay, next page. For well, the comparison of the projector, uh, I skipped that. And, uh, four, the intelligent species, huh? uh, impressed species, already spoke about that. So I skip that. I go to page 172. So we have many words now. Huh? You have the word likeness, the word similitude. Uh, the word resemblance, but the best is intelligible, express species. Uh, that is the technical word. And here it is the phantasm, uh, which is the sensible express species. Okay. Um, now, uh, uh, you have uh, in the middle. Um, okay. Uh, number, excuse me, number five, I already spoke about the, um, the formal sign. I explained that last class. Huh? The role of the concept is to indicate another thing. You remember, mm -hmm. we cannot see the image in our retina, on our retina. Mm -hmm. But we see things through that image. So the role of the concept is to be a formal sign. I, I, I use that formal sign to know that means it is not only immaterial, it is spiritual because it, it is not attached to any kind of matter. Why? Because it is abstract and universal. The phantasm is attached to matter because it is singular, sensible. But the concept is absolutely detached from matter. So if it is detached from matter totally, it is not only immaterial, it is spiritual. And if the activity of the human soul are spiritual, the human soul is spiritual. And if the human soul is spiritual, it is incorruptible, it is immortal. So that is very, very important for the proof of the spirituality, immortality of the soul. Um, I go now to um, just a grenier, grenier, three, five, two, huh? Uh, it is all knowledge tends to an object at its turn, but something, sometimes knowledge cannot have an object that is physically present. Huh? So therefore, in this case, the knowing subject must form in itself a likeness of the thing known. What is that? A formal sign. In fact, the phantasm is a formal sign and the concept is a formal sign. Concept 
and phantasm have no reality except to indicate what is a thing. That means it is through them that we know what is a thing. Huh? Like my picture on my eye, I cannot see it, but everything is known through that picture on my retina. Okay? So the likeness is called express. Okay, let's put that. No? So I know, I do not know how huh, the express species itself. I do not know that. I do not know the phantasm directly. But I know the object through the phantasm. I know what is a thing through the concept. Okay? Um, I go to page 155. So the express, at the top, express species is sensible or intelligible. 73. 173. 173, yes, 173. So the intelligent species is called subjective concept, a formal concept of mental world. I will not insist on that. What is important, it is a formal concept. That means uh, the, 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 the concept is a formal sign. He indicates something. His, his existence is to indicate something. You know, what is the, John the Baptist? What is, is the voice indicating who is Jesus? But he was a voice. He was sensible. But here it is not sensible, it is abstract and universal. But it is something existing. Mm -hmm. uh, totally detached from matter, it is because a uh, concept. Mm -hmm. It is a um, <coughs> spiritual reality. Huh? See, the role has six, the role of the phantasm, mm -hmm. I know that, huh? it is the instrumental efficient cause. Huh? Mm -hmm. Instrumental efficient cause. Okay? Um, rather, the, fa the phantasm is said to be the material cause and also the instrumental cause. Okay, why the material cause? Because huh? <coughs> <coughs> the phantasm here, even if it is not material, it represents something material. But in fact, the best is to say that the phantasm is the instrumental efficient cost, okay? Forget the other. Instrumental efficient cost, okay? Now, next, 25.3. Uh, the process of concept formation is the process of man substantial unity. One of the consequences we can deduce from what we study now is the unity of the human person. Not only the unity, the substantial unity. What is the word here? Substantial. The word? Substance. substance. You know, substance is under the critical accident. Huh? <coughs> so it is a unity, substantial unity. What is making my, my substance as a man, my body and my soul? soul. Both are co principle of one reality. Yes. I am not a body, I am a soul, no. I am one reality. I will say I am not a soul in the body. That is the theory of Descartes. I am a soul in the body like a driver in the car. Because my soul is animating everything. My soul is animating all my activities. Is sustaining the unity of all my cells. My soul makes me one substance. What holds together, keeps together all my cells, my trillions of cells, 100 trillions of cells together, it is my form, my soul. So I have one substantial rea reality, huh? unity. I am multiple. Trillions of cells, many, many, many powers. I am only one person, one I, one substance. Why I am one substance? Because I am one reality. And that reality is body animated by one soul. I am not a body. I am not a soul. I am a soul animated by a, a body, animated by a soul, or a soul animating a body, huh? uniting. So man's substantial unity implies not only the unity of body and soul, 
but also that of sense and intellect. He, my knowledge huh, is not only sense knowledge. My knowledge is not only intellectual knowledge. My knowledge is all that. And in fact, I told you before, huh? I repeat, no? even in my sense knowledge, I cannot separate my sense knowledge from my intellectual knowledge. When I eat, I know that is an apple. Not only I have the sense knowledge of the apple, I have also the intellectual knowledge of the apple. That is a proof of the union, substantial union. We are one, opposed to Descartes. We oppose totally to Descartes. That is important also for spiritual life. Some current of spirituality, they despise the body. They say, oh, I am a soul. They be, in fact, the Cartesian, I am a soul. My body does not exist, no. No, my body exists. I prefer St. Ignatius of Loyola. When you say, and when you meditate, huh, apply your senses to the text of the gospel. It does not say, think about nothing. No. Use your senses. Use your imagination. Use your memory. Why? Because we are one. When I, I smell a rose, it is not my body that smells a rose. You know the film, <coughs> Rabbit Feast? is about that. In Rabbit Feast, that sect try to separate body and soul. And what is body is not good. Only what is spiritual. And one, that that served them a pure, excellent banquet. They have difficulty to separate body and soul. And they try not to express their feeling, and they try to talk about many things, but nothing about the good food they are eating. No, no. You know, there is a link between philosophy and theology. The conception of the human person is not only for philosophy. The conception of the human person is for politics, for economy. It is also for spirituality. <coughs> and we have to take care of the body. It is important to develop our senses, to have good senses, to have glasses to see clearly, to have something to listen if you are not able to hear. Huh? Okay. Um, I close the parenthesis. So the, uh, I go to page 173. I already spoke about that. Huh? At the bottom here, huh? as the soul is to the body, so the intellect is to the senses. Huh? So the soul is to the body, like the intellect is to the senses. soul is to the body, like the intellect is to senses. That means my soul animates my body, my intellect animates my senses. My senses. That means when I smell, I smell not only with my body, I smell with my intellect. I cannot separate. I eat, I scream. I don't eat ice cream only with my mouth. <laughs> I eat ice cream also with my intellect and my will. <laughs> it is, it, that is the foundation of moral, f fundamental moral, you see. If we separate, we are not responsible. We cannot separate. All my activities are not only physical, uh, bi biological, when they are aware, huh? I eat, I sleep, etc. They are also rational. Because I must reflect on that, will that, huh? etc. The road will next week we study uh, the will uh, and the uh, freedom. Huh? Okay. Now I, con I go to uh, I continue. Um, the sense of never act without being animated by the intellect. Very important. So there is no pure sensation. When I am awakened, I am uh, conscious. There is no pure sensation. If I smell a, a flower, I smell the flower with my nose, I smell the flower with my old person, my intellect also. Okay? When I see a landscape, I see the landscape with my eyes, I see the landscape with my intellect. We cannot separate. I eat a good meal, I eat a good meal with my mouth, 
but with my intellect, etc. The unity of the human person. And when I pray, I should pray with my whole body. You know, if you go to Africa, I'm sure in Nigeria it's the same thing. But the people, when they sing, they sing with their whole body. For example, in Cameroon, we say, Duma, 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 glory, glory, glory. They cannot say glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, peace on goodwill. We bless you, we praise you. That is boring. No? It's yet not the same, huh? You sing with your body. Because your body is you. You clap and It's funny, in the Bible they say, sing with joy, exalt, clap and dance. Sing with joy, clap and dance. <laughs> I am ashamed of our, excuse me, our the boring literature. I live in Africa 20 years. I must say, we are, we are, not, we are out of the track. We, we are Cartesian. We are the victim of Descartes. Descartes said, the body is a machine, and only you are not the machine, you are the mind. So, in spirituality, Johnsonism, all that is the fruit of Descartes. The fruit of that, I would say, heresy, <laughs> to separate the body and the soul. It's important for theology. Imagine if we separate the body and the soul, Jesus Christ did not save the world by dying on the cross. Very serious, no? If you separate them, you say, oh, Jesus is only a, a mind. So his body, his passion, his resurrection has no value at all. What do we do with the mystery of incarnation? We would throw it. You know, it, it, at first sight, it seemed very simple, but the consequences are very, very <coughs> serious. We should have a more deep living literature, is my desire. Huh? I lived that 20 years in Cameroon with my student, and when I came here, I found that so boring, so boring. We are statues. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God Almighty and all. Heaven and earth are for stupid. Glory to God in the highest. We should sing that with... Dance. Yeah, dance. Yeah. I was a chaplain of the Port Clare in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. uh, during, when they entered the Mass, they did dance, huh? <laughs> it, it was beautiful, like the, we see in, in the, uh, uh, the St. Clement House with the uh, Vietnamese sisters. We are one. And we pray only with our intellect. We ignore, so what happened? But it's difficult to pray. Because my, my body tried to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I am one. It's the same when we, we speak with other, we are one. We cannot only want to save the soul, we have to save also the body. It is Jesus said, huh? we, are, we will judge, not on our piety, we will judge if we have feed, fed others, if we have taken care of their body. To feed is to feed the body, to think the body. To, don't forget that. I, you know, I like that chapter because it is the truth. And the truth is we are one with body and soul. And the consequences of that are excessively important even for the Christian dogmas. You know, some sect, they deny the, the humanity of Jesus. In fact, our brother, Muslim, they are the, the son of those who deny the, the, the divinity of Jesus, only a body. Jesus was only a body. Jesus was body and soul. He was really man and really God, etc. Okay, I close my theological intervention. I hope that we don't send that to the Holy See. No, <laughs> send that to Francis, he will be happy. <laughs> But some thought that don't be really happy with that. No, we have to, to know better, uh, better our, tea, our philosophy. We are one being. Now, page 174, uh, the, the object of the intellect, and it is the intelligible. What is intelligible? Intelligible in, means to be able to know by the intellect. Intellect, intelligible. Evil, uh, evil to be known by the intellect. Sensible, able to be known by 
senses, huh? intelligible, okay, sensible. So the proper material object of the human intellect. So we have to, uh, the proper, we say the, any object, in fact, the, 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 the intellect can know everything. Uh, everything. And the intellect is open to the infinite, like the will is open to the infinite. Is the reason why we never finish to know. We never finish to love, to be happy. And I hope in eternity we will not be statues, but we will be active. And we will be able to meet great scientists, great saints, and to talk with them and to share their knowledge. Huh? <coughs> I don't imagine we stay all the time like that for all eternity. No. Otherwise we become marble. Marble is mother. We'll be intelligent because we are intelligent today. Huh? Okay? So the proper material object, in fact, it is <coughs> the, um, the aspect of truth. Huh? We have that at number 25.4.2. Uh, and what is the truth in a thing? It is the definition of the thing. It is the whiteness of the thing. It is the quiddity of the thing. What is that? So the first thing to know, it is to know what is a thing. You remember when we studied logic, we said that the correlation of the first operation is to make a definition, to know the law of definition. After that, the, the judgment after that reasoning. Huh? So I go, uh, the, the, I go to the intermediate. What is required in any object is to be knowable. <coughs> huh? so in fact, the summary of all the page is at the bottom here. Uh, the, the, the six, seven last uh, lines are very important. Everything, I really comment on that. The intellect knows such being from the viewpoint of, of its truth and intelligibility. Well, don't forget truth, conformity of my mind to the reality. Yeah. Intelligibility, the capacity of a thing, of a thing to be known by an intellect. That's the meaning. Huh? Intelligibility, the capacity of a thing to be known by an intellect. Intelligent man. Uh, uh, and. So accordingly, in consequence, why the total or adequate material object, the total or material object is being, the total or material, adequate material, adequate material object. is being it's adequate complete no? adequate formal matter and forma material formal object is truth and intelligibility. Well, I explain that. Intelligibility. <laughs> oh, being. To understand that, we have to refer to some notion we see next time in metaphysics. Every being, like the fact he is a being, he is one, huh? or other, hmm? different, he is true because he is able to be known by an intellect, huh? is true, or if you want, intelligible, and he is good, or desiderable. So, the fact of any, you know, the, my intellect is open to any being. I can know everything. That the being in the measure, of course, it is true. For example, you buy a, a a diamond, but you go home and the diamond is made in plastic. It's not a real diamond, huh? It's not a true diamond. So, by the fact a thing exists, huh, being exists, huh, it is true. 
that means it is known by at least the one who did that. And it is good because the fact it exists must have a sufficient reason to exist. That is the adequate material object of the intellect. That means the intellect can know every, every being. But the formal object and the particular point of view huh, is the truth. In fact, it is attached to that here. Huh? That means what is important, it is not only to know, but to know the thing as true. That means my knowledge, my, what I know, must correspond to what it, it is. That is the goal of, not, of, of knowing. We know to attain the truth. And what is the truth? It is when my, my, my knowledge corresponds to the <coughs> reality. When my knowledge my, huh, corresponds to the reality here. In fact, there is a link huh, between material and form. In fact, they go together. Like matter and form, they go together. In fact, the truth exists in the being. And the intelligibility exists in the being. A thing is intelligible in the, in the measure it exists. If it does not exist, we cannot know it. <coughs> and a thing is true, it can be, uh, if the being is true, the being can be known by an intellect as correct. And what the intellect would have in his ear, in his mind, huh, correspond to the reality. So that is the two aspects of, uh, of, uh, of the knowledge. Huh? Okay? Mm -hmm. I go now to page 1676. In January, we will come back on that. We will mm -hmm. come back on that. But it is interesting to see that the, th the, the theory of knowledge is linked with metaphysics. A being exists as being. It is true. It is intelligible. I can know it. I can't desire it because it is good. I can love it. At least the one who did that must love that because if he did not love that, he will not produce that. So if God does produce being because he, he put it to the being, the, true, the truth is a true being and he is also uh, loving that being and giving to that being all the goodness the being can receive according to its nature. A cat as a cat, and, a, and a, a flower as a flower. And I go to page 176. Um, now the role of the brain. Well, at the bottom of 75, what is the role of the brain? Well, here I come back what we said just before about the agent intellect and the uh, phantasm. Agent intellect is the principal efficient cause. The, the phantasm is the instrumental <coughs> efficient cause. It's the same for that here. Huh? My brain is the location. Is the instrumental <coughs> efficient cause. Mm -hmm. And my intellect is the principal, principal efficient cause. You know, that distinction is very important. Very important. Very important. You know, we don't realize how it's important to understand almost all the concepts we are studying. Because they will be used for four years in theology. You will use those concepts. So if you understand those concepts, it will be easy for you to study scholastic theology. Otherwise, you will learn by heart without understanding. And you will not enjoy your theology. So it's important to acquire. And consider that class come excessively important, not for the grade before, your preparation for uh, study theology. Okay? So on page 176, uh, the first proof, and that seems to me, that page is very important, huh? very important. Uh, I will try to explain that. The brain is a material substance, etc. Okay? Um, but man's intellectual operation show different characteristics. His ideas or concepts are universal 
not limited to space and time like the brain. The brain is space and time. And many of his judgments are necessary and true at all time and all place, you know. So the universality, here, well, universal and abstract, huh? universal. The universality of man idea and the necessary necessity of many of the judgments cannot derive from a material organ. For example, when you study syllogism, we study the inference. The inference cannot come from the matter of the syllogism, come from your mind. No? It is not material. They require a power that is some extent beyond time and space, free from the contingency of matter. So that your brain is time and space, but what your thought is all time and space. So you cannot say my brain is the source of my thought, huh? like the secretion of the, the brain. Huh? As, uh, it is the, the teaching of Feuerbach taken by Marx after. Huh? If a Feuerbach, we said that first. So the human capability for reflection. I can reflect. We saw that just before. Huh? You remember? Agent and reflect on the patient. Huh? The capacity of reflection. The capacity of being able to scrutinize, to analyze my own action, <coughs> my own way of thinking. My own way of willing. I can control my act of willing. Not only I will, but I know I will. I can control my act of willing. Finally, I can say yes, I can say no. Okay? <coughs> Against even my instinct. Mm -hmm. So here, Father will now give you a, a word about a reflection. Huh? The mind's attention to itself and to the cognitive or appetitive act of the thinker, the intellect turning back on itself to its own acts, in its awareness of being aware, huh? awareness of being aware, subject and object coincide. In man, I am at the same time the one who is the subject of knowledge and the object of knowledge. I know myself. And Socrates said that the first most important thing no te se utan. Know yourself. And to know myself, I must have the power of reflection. That is a spiritual power. Uh, in this awareness of being, excuse me, the luminous process, presence of man's act or reflection uh, is another indication that he has a spiritual power. It is a proof of the spirituality of the soul, as we will see next week that the fact we can control our own impulsion, own, and we are above that, it is also a, a sign of spirituality, huh? the freedom of... Mm -hmm. And I add something, it is in the paper, but I read the text I have here. We know the spirituality of the soul through the action of the intellect, which grasps the universal, and the will, which tends necessarily to the perfect good. So the soul huh, is, uh, uh, is animating the intellect and the intellect as an object of universal truth. That is not material. The soul is animating the will and the object of the will is the perfect good. That is not material. So that means the object of my intellect and my will is not material. If the object is unmaterial, the act is not material and the power is not material. And the source of the power, my soul, is not material. So we start from the object that is immaterial, spiritual, and the act is spiritual, <coughs> the power is spiritual, therefore the subject of all that is also spiritual. I know the spirituality of the human soul from its activities. He has some activity totally independent from matter. For example, you know, abstraction is activity, as a principal efficient cause is independent of matter. It's not matter that makes you think. But use matter, a phantasm, as an instrument, as when you write, you are not, uh, your pencil is not the cause of the whole writing you do. It is you, the responsible. Huh? And they will not glorify. It's never wrote, written on the book. This book was written by this pen. Uh, this book was written by Joe Blow or John the 23rd, etc. Okay? So, um, uh, you know, 
uh, it's important to to have the good foundation for the spirituality of the human soul. How we can have the spirituality of the human soul? Only through the phenomenon of intellection and volition. So tonight we study intellection. And we saw that how the intellect, uh, well, uh, knowing even the material thing, is not depending directly on the material thing except as a tool. Like a, a, a pianist does not depend it's not the piano that plays, it is he who plays the piano, but he needs an instrument. So the instrument is the instrumental cause, but the most efficient cause is the principal cause. You know, when somebody kills another, he is judged. Never they condemn the gun, never they condemn uh, the sword, never. They condemn the person. Man, person. The person. Because the person is the a principal efficient cause. So if I can have operation without, uh, uh, without depending of material reality, uh, that is a sign, is a proof that my activities are spiritual, my power who produce those activities are spiritual, and I am spiritual. But it's spiritual it is to be and to act independently of matter. And if we use matter, we use that only as an instrument, as a tool. And that is a proof. In next class, when we study uh, freedom, we will see also some proof of the spirituality of the event soul. Because if you accept the spirituality of the event soul, you accept its immortality. You know, everything <laughs> is, is linked with everything. And like in geometry, like in mathematics. Huh? So it's important to master everything. And finally, the last thing is based on all what come before. Have a good night. Have a good dream.